Now I want to start showing some uh, abilities within iRise and creating functional mockups. And what I want to do first is I want to create a simple data table or data grid within an iRise mocked up screen. And what we need to do first is we need to create a data sheet that we can pull into our iRise page. And what a data sheet is, is just basically a representation of a spreadsheet that we can use as an ability to mock up a database type table. So what we can do here is a couple different things. We can um, enter all this data in manually and what I'm doing now is just creating headers and then we can start entering in data and this would be really good for if you don't really have a database set up yet in your project and you just want to show some simple uh, data examples for your client. But there is another way to do this. And you can, you can import CSV files, uh, CSV spreadsheets from Excel to kind of speed up your data. Let's say you pulled it from an, a database that was existing, or you just wanted to enter your information into Excel and then enter it into iRise. So uh, for that, let's delete this data sheet and create a new one. We'll call it Users. And now I'm going to hit the Import CSV button and choose this uh, CSV data sheet. And this will be included in the tutorial. Click Open and automatically all my data gets pulled into my uh, iRise data sheet. So as you can see here we have usernames, passwords, first name, last name, and contact information. So we've got our initial data set up. And now what I want to do is create our data table within our iRise mockup. So I have a page here. I'm going to right click and rename this uh, user table. And the next thing I want to do is to plop a table onto our page. So up here on the top menu, I'm going to left click and select table and click again within the page. And I want this to be a data table with one header and five columns. I'm going to click OK and then move that around a little bit. Now the next thing that I want to do is to uh, fill in our header. So I'm going to choose text labels and call this username, first name, last name, location, Now, for the data items, I want to do the exact same thing. Same old story, same old song and dance, as Aerosmith once sang. So, what I like to do for uh, the data cells is when I enter these, I like to put in brackets around them just to signify that this is for data. You don't have to do this, it's just something I like to do. So, I'm going to name them pretty much the same. For location, this is going to be kind of a mocked concatenated item, so I'm going to put a few uh, text labels in here. City, comma, space, and state. And then finally, zip code. Now, I want to be able to distinguish between the header and the data, so I'm going to click one of the cells and then right click in it and choose table select row. If you're using a lot of tables in iRise that uh, action comes in very handy, table select row, especially if you got a lot going on within the page. And I'm going to go up to the formatting toolbar at the top and just bold all of the header items. Now our next task is to grab that data from the data sheet using an object and plop it into our data table. We can do this a couple different ways. I can select the record item here at the top and then click outside of the page and say that I want to get records from the user data sheet, then click OK, and it shows up in our IRIS page. Or I can simply right click outside the page and say insert record action and get the same thing. Now that we have our data sheet representation in our page, all I have to do is click and drag on top of our data labels 
And then once the label highlights, let go of my mouse button, and then choose what column from the data sheet I want to show up on that label. This is username. This is first name. Last name. Etc. Etc. And finally, zip code. So as you can see, each of these data pieces has a relationship with each text label. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well gosh, that looks pretty messy. And that's just the way IRIS does things. Um, if you have a lot going on, your page is going to look a lot messier than this. And it's just something that I've come to accept. But the nice thing is, is that even though your pages can get really messy, um, you always are going to be able to find what you need and nothing's going to be hidden. As long as you, um, you know, kind of have your own method of organization, everything will be just fine. So we have our data sheet set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to execute this so you can see what it's going to look like within a web browser. So I click the launch button and here we are within Internet Explorer with our data sheet and all of our data records. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of Internet Explorer and just do a little formatting within the data table. What I want to do is select in a cell, right click, table select, table, and I want to change the borders uh, that are represented within my table. So I can go down here to borders in the formatting menu, and let's say I want this to be one pixel, and I want it to have a border color of a light gray. So as you can see, my borders have changed within my table. The next thing I want to do is you know, point out again my header row. So I'm going to table select row. Then I'm going to change the background color to a light blue. Now the last thing that I want to do is when all my records are showing, I want to distinguish each data row uh, with a different color or, or alternating a different color. So to do that, I select one of my data cells. You don't have to select the whole row. And then go down here in your table row options and show alt row background color and just change that. We're going to change that to a light gray. And then the last thing I want to do is add one more text label just to say, hey, this is in fact the user's table. I want to select that, make it bold, make it an 18 point font. And now we've got some sort of representation of a web page. I'm going to hit the execute button again, which will load IE with my data table once more. So now you can see my header really stands out and all my alternate record data record rows are a light gray. And really that's it. That's a simple data table that and you will use this skill over and over in a lot of your pages and uh, We'll show more things about data tables down the line. Thanks a lot.